So welcome to another edition of Intercept U, our ongoing discussion of all things construction, uh, specifically and how SIPs fits into that. Intercept SIPs, our ready to assemble panels. Uh, we always like to remind you, uh, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, like and subscribe, add comments. That really helps us get uh, this message out to more individuals. And also, please, in your comments, uh, give us ideas, uh, questions that you have, things that we could cover. Because if you're asking the question, it's a good chance somebody else is as well. So we always want to be a, a source of information. And if there's something that we're, we're not familiar with, uh, we'll find the individuals that are. And maybe even bring them in and talk to them about it and help us to understand all of this even better. Today we're going to talk about uh, the, the BS of SIPs. Now, of course, the BS stands for uh, building science. We're all adults here. What else could it stand for? Uh, but we're going to talk about the building science of what makes SIPs a high-performance building enclosure. And so there's three different areas that we're going to touch on. And incidentally, we have Joe Pasma with us here today. Joe's our national sales manager, and I'm John Goals. Uh, so Joe and I are going to kind of just touch on briefly, we've, we've talked at length and we have other videos that talk about specifically about our value and how it's, how it's uh, uh, measured and, and the, the strengths and weaknesses of talking about our value. But what, a, what makes this enclosure really a high performance enclosure altogether? So we're going to touch on three different areas, minimal thermal bridging, minimal air infiltration, and what that really means, and then solid insulation which adds to that R value, but it's a little different, a little bit of a tweak on that idea of, of R value. So let's start out, Joe, can we talk about that, the idea of minimal thermal bridging? Why is this important and what does that mean? From a, from a building science, a BS standpoint, thermal bridging um, reduces the energy efficiency of whatever the enclosure is, whether you're talking about walls or roofs, and typically that's where we're we're using SIPs. So like in the model behind you, um, you see the, the white foam, the EPS as the core of the panel. Well, that and the OSB laminated to it make the structure. And there are very minimal studs included in the wall or in, in a roof system, um, eye joists or double two bys are spaced quite a bit farther apart if they're needed from a structural standpoint. So by doing that, the EPS has a higher R value, i.e. it's it more insulative, um, better at resisting heat flow, if you will. So having materials that don't touch the inside and the outside of the building, like studs, wood studs, you minimize that, that thermal bridging. It's just a way for heat to move from one side of the wall or roof to the other. Wood has an R value of somewhere around one per inch. So on a, on a six inch wall panel, you've got about an R6 at where each stud is. Well, the R value on the foam is close to four. So that's four times better than what you have with the panel it's, or with the studs themselves. So the thermal bridging is, is a big deal from that standpoint. And as we're talking, no doubt, Greg, behind the scenes is putting up pictures to show some of the the uh, thermal imaging of what thermal bridging looks like. And I think it's really easy for us to wrap our heads around it when we think about how various metals bridge. For instance, uh, when you're in a storefront and they've got an aluminum frame around the window and it frosts on the outside, it also frosts on the inside. Uh, that bridges very, very quickly. Uh, there's, there's no R value there. And so we can see that we can kind of wrap our heads around it, but it's harder to appreciate that that's doing that same thing with wood on a lesser scale. Um, there is some R value with wood, but, it, but basically it's doing the same thing, right? Yes. And where you see it a lot with wood framing, um, sips or, or stick framing, is that fall and spring of the year, or yeah, fall and, and late spring where, where you start having frost on the roof, those light layers of frost that turn everything nice and white, getting ready for Christmas. Well, you see that that frost as it melts, that's an indication of where thermal bridging is occurring. And there's there's subtle differences between stick framing and the SIP frame structures and, and the videos and, and um, graphics that will be put up on this show 
what that looks like. So it's it's pretty evident, not only the thermal cameras, but then um, nature's way of showing the thermal bridging itself as well. And I, and I think it's it's nice to differentiate here in this particular subject, the difference between panelized construction and SIPs, because the, by definition, the, the goal of structural insulated panels is to reduce framing. It's not just to panelize it. Now there's, there's great advantages to panelized construction as far as speed of construction and the overlap of things being done in the, in the shop or the factory while, while the dirt work is being done. But just because it's panelized doesn't make it SIPs, doesn't make it structural insulated panels. So that's one of the things that as a consumer or a builder, it's important to recognize the difference and make sure that we're understanding what, what those differences are and what we're actually getting. So that takes us to our second subject, that of minimal air infiltration. Um, start that subject. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one, um, a lot of people really don't think about the idea of air infiltration or exfiltration. A leaky building, for instance. I mean, you know, we've talked on previous videos about growing up in the in the sixties, seventies, and you'd sit on the floor playing um, in your parents' house and the curtains are blowing back and forth in the wintertime or when it's windy outside. That's an, a perfect example of leaky windows and air coming in from the outside. Well, with SIPs, because of the way we detail the connections, we put a sealant around every joint that we put, put the panels together or, and or we use SIP tape on the interior to minimize any chance of air movement through the joints. By doing that, what we've done is tightened up the envelope. So now that inadvertent air exchange that's occurring from when we were kids in the leaky houses stops and the mechanical designers are able to then take advantage of a tight envelope, almost like a baggie, a Ziploc baggie, if you will, that you put cheese in or whatever in, um, you know, storing food you keep the air out it lasts longer well with a building envelope you tighten it up and you can control your heating and cooling loads on the interior much more effectively what so, about the idea of things being too tight you hear that um but the acronym again in bs building science is to build tight and ventilate right so along with the, the tightened envelope, you need to have adequate mechanical ventilation to get your fresh air in, but then you can filter that and take out any of the allergens or things that, that cause um, respiratory issues with people. And that then leads to a, a comfort level in the home that you, um, you don't get with stick frame construction that's not as tight, especially when you have this time of the year with pollen, um, you, you get some of that ozone stuff from the fires that are drifting in different parts of the country and you smell that ozone in the air. Well, the, the SIPS envelope doesn't have that issue when you're inside because it's so tight, it keeps that all filtered out, if you will. So when it comes to building it tight and, and having that tight envelope, is SIPS the silver bullet? Is it just as long as you use SIPs, it's going to be tight? Absolutely not. Um, you still have to detail things correctly with SIPs, but you can do the same or you can achieve the same level of air tightness with stick frame construction. It's just that that saying the devil's in the details. There are a lot more connections that you have to pay attention to with stick frame construction that will allow the air to leak in or leak out. So um, no, both systems work very well. It's a matter of bang for your buck, if you will. I think with a SIP building, it's easier to achieve those high levels of reduced air leakage. Yeah, and that's not just our opinion or hearsay or because we work for intercept, uh, that's what we want it to be. But really it's proven time and time again with a blower door test where we're actually measuring the, the amount of air leakage. And to, to get to a, a energy star or focus on energy standard is, is, is much easier. It, 
it's it's on, almost an automatic if you take care of, of sealing the joints. Uh, to, even to get to a passive house standard, we can get to that standard of air leakage if we are even more aware of the details. And so it, it's not just that it, 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 this is a, a nice thing that we talk about and, and we'd like to be the industry leaders in this area. It's just the solid insulation lends itself to the, the lack of air leakage. And again, we've, we've uh, illustrated this with dirty insulation in walls when you're doing a, doing a demo and how much dirt is in the insulation because of air that has been passing back and forth through the wall. And that is stopped with, us, with our solid insulation, their expanded polystyrene. So it, I appreciate that really getting a, a, a handle on the fact that uh, this is the real world uh, application of what we're talking about here. And of course, even when you build a, a building, sick built as tight as you stopping the air infiltration, you still have the thermal bridges we're back to that. And so uh, it's not quite as efficient. So let's talk about that third thing. <clears throat> we tend to talk about the third leg of the stool being our value, but you brought up something a little bit different. It was just defined as um, solid insulation that maintains our value. So what does, what does that mean, solid in, insulation that maintains our value? When you look at fiberglass and the installation instructions associated with that, they, they the manufacturer's instructions say to fluff the fiberglass up. And when you put it between the studs in the wall, you don't want to over compress it. So if you have electrical chases, um, boxes, electrical boxes or switches, outlet boxes in the wall, you got to squish the fiberglass to get around there. Well, as soon as you start doing that, you've minimized the amount of airspace that you have in there. And the fiberglass, the, the whole idea of that is to stop air movement. So you need to have a sealed cavity with this, and the fiberglass then helps hold the air in place if it's nice and tight. The other thing that happens over time with fiberglass, if it's not stapled up or attached to the studs in some way, or, or some of the other cellulosic type insulations that are out there, gravity will pull those down. And as that happens, you get a denser material down at the bottom and not so dense at the top, which then affects how that cavity, that little space performs from in our value standpoint, when you think about the EPS foam, again, based on the, the um, model behind you, the white foam is solid. It doesn't move. It doesn't sag. It's glued with an adhesive to both OSB skins. So what you put in there on day one is there 50 or 60 years later. It doesn't move like the um, other types of, of insulation that are out there. And that's that also plays into this whole idea of the performance enclosure, the high performance enclosure of a SIP building. Absolutely. And, and we have the graphic that shows, I, I love this one, that the whole wall R value of uh, a SIP wall, a six inch SIP wall is 21.6. Uh, and that's, that's based on measurements. That's, that's not just hearsay again, that's based on study. The whole wall R value of a fiberglass wall with studs at two foot on center is 13.7. But in the real world, that's if the insulation is put in perfectly. But in the real world, when they actually measure how walls perform, the whole wall R value is closer to 11. Uh, it, it drops from 13.7 in a perfect world to 11 in the real world because of what you're talking about, with it sagging on the top, condensing on the bottom, being pushed in by, by boxes. And so the way that, that wall actually uh, performs is at an 11. So it's lo losing 2.7 R value. So it really, it really does make a big difference. Again, I, I saw this illustrated uh, pretty consistently back when I was a drywall contractor, spraying texture, or spraying paint on cold days. And you would see uh, frost form, or at least it dries slower, in the top corners of the stud cavity, you would see right next to the front door, you would see a round spot that would dry slower. Well, that's where the outside light fixture was put in and compressed the, the insulation. And it's always a round fixture. And so you'd have this perfect circle of, of wet paint or wet texture as it was as it was drying. 
because of the loss of our value and really what it's doing is creating a thermal bridge by condensing it you're 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 taking the air out of it and creating a thermal bridge and so it really does function this way and and so by by combining these three areas in SIPs, uh, that's that's the BS. That's the building science. Uh, and there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of claims made. Uh, it, it's really nice in this industry when we can back things up with things like blower door tests and and in. Um, organizations like the Rocky Mountain Institute that do very specific research on how buildings are functioning. We have some uh, buildings out there where they've built two buildings and put ice in both of them to see how long it's going to take for the ice to melt. Uh, and, and again, the high performance building envelope always performs better. It always performs well. And so that just kind of helps us again to get a, a take on what we're talking about. Really appreciate your time today, Joel. And again, we appreciate everybody tuning in. And as you have questions, please, please let us know. And this, that will wrap up this segment of uh, Intercept U. And we look forward to seeing you next time.